fabulous shop. Hello and welcome. Q Sports International and Predator Group present the Pro Billiard Series in Michigan. This is Michigan Open, the third event of this year, which will culminate in the Predator World 10-Ball Invitational this coming March in Las Vegas. 64 players will be playing 10-Ball, two of three sets to four. A shootout if they tie the sets. This is winter breaks, three foul rule, 30-second time clock, $75,000 prize fund with a 22-5. First prize. This is a first round winner side match. This is George Teachea and Eric Horlipson bringing you the live action from Battle Creek, Michigan. Eric, how do you see these guys uh, winding up here? Looks like Hong has a uh, 50 point edge in Fargo. You have to take that into account. I mean, the short races are probably going to cancel that out, that, that edge out a little bit. Both players have experience playing on the series, so I, I look for it to be a close match. Um, I mean, Hong is really close to one of the, you know, you've got to consider him one of the top 20 in the world, considering his uh, matchroom success, and he's done well in a few Predator events as well. Yes, he has. He's an 808 Fargo. Th those guys, you know, it's funny because last year, there was 30, about 31, 32, 800 plus Fargo rated players. This year, there's like 43. I noticed. And it. they all came up from the Philippines in the last action that they had in the last couple of months. That's right. And, and you noticed Anton Raga's yep. Uh, yep. Fargo skyrocketing uh, there and players yeah. getting above that 830 yeah. level now as well. Oh, yeah. They're almost at 840. Right. Uh, this uh, I call those players the elite players. Ooh, we caught a little bit too much deflection on the inside or on the left spin there. Overcut the one. Got away with it, though. Well, I think he missed it just right, but I kind of like this kick that Jeremy's going to have. Yeah, the four is a little bit too high up the rail to call the call it a bigger pocket on the mm -hmm. near the corner there, but uh, definitely makeable. Yeah, I see this, uh, especially these, these guys here. Although it's harder to judge on new cloth, I see them make this at a... Uh, 35%, percent I'd say you're about right. That's good. Yeah, good analysis there. That was close. Now he's giving, giving him a cut if it goes by the 10. Yeah, so you, you can cut the... You can play the 1 in the bottom left corner past the 6. Mm -hmm. Cue ball's going to be... It's a very thin hit. Cue ball's going to be running pretty heavily up table. Does have a natural three rail track kind of coming back towards the two though. Well, Wang is took 17th place in the nine ball U.S. Open nine ball tournament. This he defeated Mo El Taguani in a shootout, and Jeremy Seaman uh, defeated Jeff Hedges. Wang went to a shootout in his first round. Is yeah, that right? Wang wow. went to a shootout in his first round. Hmm. Uh, shootouts, we've had six so far out of 32 matches. It's about, what, 20%? Yeah, look for that number to move up as the tournament goes on. This day, it's a very exciting feature of this tournament. Huh? It is exciting. Uh, uh, as the tournament gets, as the players get closer in Fargo rate or talent level, um, you'll see where... Uh, the shootouts go up, but we've changed it. Uh, last last year we changed it for the first, or this year we changed it for the first time. In the final 16, uh, they play a third set, but if that third set is tied at three games apiece, then it goes to a shootout. Right. So the so the shootouts are going to be a little bit less likely once you get to the final 16. But mm -hmm. once you get into those rounds close to deciding who the final 16 will be, that's when you'll see more. I mean, this, this match has shootout written all over it to me. We'll see how it goes. It does. Uh, well, it, what, what did we see? We got uh, 45 points difference. And a race to four, 40 by 45 points difference to me is 
half a game. One good shot and a bad roll. Sure. It's, you know, half a game. It's not even, it's, I wouldn't even call it worth one mm -hmm. game. So He's able to make, make it through this rack. It's going to be a decent amount of work from the four to the five. I feel like where he'd want to be is pretty straight on the four and then drawing the cue ball back towards the nine. I think right where he's pointing is exactly where he's going to try to be for the four to yeah. get back up and travel the cue ball straight towards that nine from the four. Cue ball's traveling pretty naturally towards that path. He's going to have to move it a little bit, so no guarantees he'll get the exact angle, but you expect him to get something close to that. He's on it pretty good. He got the exact angle he was looking for. A little I'll far in the distance. Yeah. but This comes straight towards the side pocket, too, though. Mm-hmm. Let's see how his speed is. Even a possibility to catch the 10 if he overdraws it a little bit, too. You're right. Look at that side pocket. Wow. Too big. That was always going to be the risk there. Yeah, know. that's – uh, I avoid those like I avoid those like the plague. Yeah. But he couldn't go underneath it because the nine blocks are for the other pocket. So that was his only, only shot. He just didn't get it back up. Probably like what you, you just mentioned, probably making sure he avoided the 10. Right. Uh, took him right to the side. You like taking the seven in the corner here? I mean, it lies better for the side, but you're going to have to pound it over a little bit to get a good angle on the eight. Mm. It's kind of in between. Yeah. And just a little stun above the eight, catch the rail, and come for the seven, then the eight-ten combo. Yeah. I, f I feel like the, the corner is the safer play on the seven, even though you're moving the cue ball a little more. You don't want to be playing oh, balls at high speed <laughs> into the side. One of the things you'll learn about me, Eric, is I hate side pockets with a passion. Especially when you're playing it in at speed, right? You mm -hmm. know, if you're playing it in from right in the middle of the table where the pocket's a little more open, it's not yeah. as much of an issue. But even at that angle of sharpness, you would want to avoid that shot. He came up pretty high. And he's okay here. I feel like the cue ball could be tracking just a little bit too far to the right. Might have to put some right spin on it. Pardon me, left spin. Be okay to should be okay to hold it straight enough. Yeah, natural yeah. angle is fine. Yeah, Jeremy Seaman, as I think we mentioned, he is from Battle Creek. Yeah, hometown crowd, and you can see the, the seats around the main table mm -hmm. here are all full. Not not a seat left in the house. And Jeremy takes the first game. He had the opening break and the first game, and we'll be out for a second. Jeremy up for the second break of the match here. Choosing to break from the side rail. Look for the one to be going near the side pocket. Went a little bit sharp. Good spread on the overall rack. Eight might save him here. Last ball moving. Got it. This is going to be a tough push because the one is right near the pocket. Jump's possible, but don't see anything high, high percentage happening off a jump here. Trying to think of where he could push. He could push into a jump. I feel like that's an option he's definitely ha definitely has to consider. A jump that easier than the one that he has right now. Might be looking at pushing the cue ball just a little bit to the to his left and leaving a thin cut on the one. Main part of that strategy would be the cue ball would be really loose if Huang wants to cut it in. He's left the cut. It's very tempting. Missable as well, of course. I feel like if he does cut it in, the cue ball will hit the nine and start traveling to the left towards the two. Enough value that he definitely has to consider taking the push. He's going to give it back, though. Trailing by a game as well.
Jeremy's going offense here. Not much question about that. Biggest question is how's the cue ball going to end up on the two? But I feel like it can track it far enough over to the left that he can shoot the two in the most obvious pocket, which is the top left corner. Slow rolled it. Caught the slow roller ball like that. In fact, he actually played safe off of it. Looks like a standard save, playing the playing the cue ball up table over top of the two, which is going to make things a lot tougher. Probably playing the one across. Yeah, that's nice how he used the seven and the deuce there. Mm -hmm. Does he does he have any access to the one ball? Does I feel like he, he might have the here. left edge. Yeah. The left edge isn't going to help him that much because the cue ball will be running towards the six. Could draw at it. Depends how much he has of it. If he has, if he can hit it thick enough to jump it, or pardon me, bank it across table and kind of leave the one by the three, that'd be a good play. But looks like he's going for his jump cue. The aggressive play here is to bank it in the side. I feel like he's going to be kind of playing. You'd have to call the five. Yeah, five's a bigger ball mm -hmm. there than banking it straight in. Looks good. Let's see what Jeremy does with his jump cue. He's pretty handy with it. Had the position, just wrong pocket. Yep. There's your call pocket rules coming up in 10 ball. and 9 ball, you'd still be at the table and you'd be, you'd be straight in. It makes a big difference you sometimes. You know, that, that's one of the things I like to see in 10 ball is uh, when you play a shot like... Let's just say this 10 ball was hanging down the bottom corner pocket. And you could draw the cue ball and make it. Mm -hmm. Call the deuce and make the 10. Still win the game. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a 9 ball flavor to it. But, you know, in 10 ball, you have to call one ball or the other. Yeah. Takes away some of the creativity. They could amend it like that. I mean, you know, call call one of two shots. But I guess it leads into it's well, a bit of a fluke then, right? Uh, what are you going to exactly. do, call three the, the, balls? The 10 yeah. ball, uh, you know, loyalist will call that. If you want to do that, play 9 ball. Right. And so, which I totally understand, but it just makes it a little you know, more fun to play. Good shot by Hong there. Playing the playing the five combo on the side. Four ball is going to be tracking to the left a fair bit off the five. Ideally, shooting it in the top left pocket. Oh, off the five on the side, pardon me. Couple options here. Could play the six in the long pocket or kind of pound draw the cue ball into the, to play the six in the short pocket. Kind of favor the stun draw play. Nice shot. He does that with such ease. He just moves that ball around. It just, uh, it's... It flows so well. He's so smooth with the draw stroke. Yeah, he's he really on, is. He's on the longer side of stroke length, so yeah. like those shots will favor him. Really good timing on the cue ball too. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Feder. I agree. Along the same lines. Wasn't scared to, to no, work and, that one in either. And you hit it so pure. I mean, just that nice sound you get when you hit the center, center of the pocket, or you know, the make sure the the pocket. Part that's not going to rattle out. Yeah. He's just straight in. He's queuing like he is. Yeah, just have to stop the cue ball yeah. there. I think you stay on the same side of the table that the nine's on right now. So. I, I like going to the other side for the reason that if you hit it too hard, you might lose it in the bottom corner. He went, he used the rail. Yeah. Uh, lovely way to play that shot. Controls your speed. Yeah, something for the amateur players out there. You would never want to take that cue ball down not eight or nine feet and not hit a not hit a rail in between. There might be some angles that lead into playing like that, but you'd always look to play a second or third rail there. Mm. Yeah, it's much easier to control the speed, and if you if you're not crossing the center of the table, you're not going to find a pocket. Sure. Tied up at one here. 
couple exchanges throughout the first two racks. See where Hong chooses to break from. Well, Hong made 12 balls that uh, in the last two games. Missed one, fouled once. Jeremy made five with one foul. Yeah. Those are good stats. Yeah, we just uh, got a little uh, got a little information from the pool stat guy, and it looks like it's coming in live. We're tied at one. So, thank you. I've never met the guy. I've, uh, I've seen his I've seen his results. And after a tournament, he'll put the results out there. The number of breaks. It's stats you wouldn't have you ever seen. This I've stuff? seen I've seen yeah. that before. It is now so impressive, just yeah. so 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 impressive. Can you follow along live through a website or? Well, uh, he just sent me an email okay. and uh, said you guys can use this, and that's what we were working on when you were doing the commentary solo there. Right. And uh, now I just learned how to read it correctly. Sure. Because <laughs> we're just sta staring at the at the numbers, and we'll have it out there. That's what I just read off, and. Uh, Overall performance, score progress, pocketed balls. It gives a lot of information there. You know, hand in hand with Fargo, that can really, really uh, turn this into a numbers game. Well, and, it, and it, you know, stats like that, especially for pro players or even players of any level, it'll it'll kind of reveal what you have to work on. You know, exactly. If, if you get a if you get a stat analysis over the course of a match and the total amount of mistakes you made was 10 and six of them were missed balls. Well, you know, that's, you have to work on your pocketing, right? Right. Or the fouls or, you know, exactly. You just, you pointed it out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Five and the 10 are going to be a problem in this rack. He can get below it and play the five in the long pocket. Well, from the four to the five, I like going to the rail on the right side of the cue ball where it is now and back cut the five. Unless he moves the 10 here, which he'll risk uh, missing shape on the four. He's not missing that. He's got the perfect angle to lay it on the rail. Yes. So, yeah, he does have he does have enough room to pocket it in the short yeah. pocket. I see what you're saying there. Because if he tries to come down, you know, and get between the 10 and the five, two inches too far, and he's he, he has to bank it. Sure. He got there, I believe. It's close. Yeah, he's good. Okay. Looks like a following play. Two rails here. Maybe if you want to get aggressive, play into the third rail. He would want to play into the third rail. It's just a question of how much he has to spin it to get over that third rail. This cue ball should be close to the seven. Oh, the oh he missed the ball going too short. The deflection got him again. So that happened to... A Hong in the first rack, and it happened to Jeremy there. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit humid. It's it's on the like it's above average temperature for this time of the year uh, in Battle Creek. It's about mm -hmm. 25 degrees outside. A little bit on the humid side. That's always going to lead into the balls deflecting a little more. And I don't think it's a coincidence that in the first two racks you're seeing a thick miss with outside there and a thin miss with inside. You know the the top mm -hmm. players know how to adapt to those conditions so they'll they'll take note of that going forward sometimes it's tough though right if you if you believe you've sh if you've shot a shot a certain way so many times your brain will tend to tell you to shoot it the same way still right but mm -hmm. you have to try to make those micro adjust adjustments throughout the match okay well that was a big miss he was laying pretty nice that was probably the key shot to the whole right because we've seen him just Take advantage of it and run through it like it's butter. Mm -hmm. Cue ball controls on point here. And this for a game lead, so since the they're tied at one. Yeah. So the winner of this match will have two chances to make the final sixteen. They'll be in the final sixteen on the winner's side after this match and one more match on either side of the draw would put them in the final 16. That's everyone's goal at this point in the tournament to make the second stage. And the second stage is single elimination.
And again, it goes to the two out of three sets with a shootout only if the last set is tied at three. Guys are playing for $22,000 first place. At 13, 125 for second. So one of those, one of those things I noticed in our uh, lineup here in our players list is we have 28 players from the US, five from Poland, five from Kuwait, four from Finland and three from Greece. Just some of the notes where we had multi players from different countries. Mm -hmm. We had 10 players with an 800 plus Fargo. We had five players with 790 to 800 and we had 19 over 700 and 30 below 700. Pretty strong tournament. Yeah, it is. Doesn't have enough of the wand to cut it in here. Could play in a, a real aggressive swerve, but I don't th think that has enough value in it. He's right down. He might have just enough on it. I'm actually sitting right down the line of the shot. I, it's close, but the way he's looking at it, it kind of looks like he's going to be offensive. Well, the cue ball does run right towards that two ball uh, naturally. He just mm -hmm. pockets the one. And into traffic. Yeah, he had enough. Good stroke. Perfect. Nice shot. I have to see if the six passes the ten. Can't quite tell yet. I wonder if he um, he might try to move the six and come up for the four ball. Three shoots the three when he shoots the three. Good call. I'd be, I'd be worried about getting kind of stuck behind it, but yeah. And see how he opened up the seven just a little bit. Right. And now he can't. He doesn't have the angle for it. Now, if th now you have to look at that six ball passing the 10 for the side. Yeah, I feel like it does. He hasn't even looked at it. They are in a 30 second shot clock. Angela Williams, our referee, is handling that shot clock. We have Jeff McGee as our referee uh, in the arena. Yeah, I think he might have tried to open that up. And yeah, big power, gave it a swing. Big power draw stroke there. From our vantage point, we just can't see if the six goes. So th the way it looks like he's playing um, this rack, I would I would say it does. Do you like the safety by just sticking the cue ball with the six? That's a possibility too. You know, if it goes, he's obviously going to play the offense. Everything about the way he's telling the run or playing the run out is telling me that it does. He's looking at it closely though. Might be thinking about how the cue ball is going to run into the 10 because he needs a pretty specific angle on the 7 to not have to move the 8. Well, doesn't he want to move the 8? Because he, if he's going to come into the 7 from this angle, uh, he'd have to run back and forth. Yes, yeah, so, so it, but, if you, but if you were able to get through the angle enough to get straight enough on the 7, you wouldn't have to move it at all, right? Yeah, if you get way yeah. up there, yeah, exactly. So he, it, if the 6 goes, he'd have to draw it to the side and back out. Playing a big, some, again, yeah. a big power. He's, he's drawn to the side rail on the left and back to, to the seven, just like this. Nice shot. That's the shot of the match so far. So he's good here. He doesn't have to move the eight. Played a really nice out here. Nice, nice uh, shot on the one and the first shot of the rack. Managed the rest of the rack very nicely. Here we go, tracking the cue ball towards that 10. 
first shot on the nine. And then the ten ball to tie it up at two. Looks like he's going to have to draw the cue ball two rails here. I mean, there's lots of room. The ten's pretty close to the side. Just a little more work than he would have wanted, but definitely manageable. Might even power draw the ball out one rail. Rather hit the ball at that speed. I like that shot a lot. Yeah, definitely. Bit of left spin, throw the throw the ball in the pocket. Now they're tied at two. Jeremy started out with the win, gave up two games, and has come back to tie it up. Now they've fully locked up. They're tied in games. One ball difference, and the ball's made. Uh, same number of misses, same number of fouls. Same number of errors. Indicative of the scoreline as well. Yep. And, of course, the I guess those are the AccuStats. Uh, uh, rating, 0.826 versus a 0.818. Crazy when you see these world-class yeah. players um, playing at like a 950 level on the 10-foot now. It's just like it's, it's just unimaginable, but it keeps happening. Right? Uh, it, it, there's quite a few of them to get up over the 900s. Anytime yeah. you finish a match over the 900s, it's beautiful I to know. watch. Yeah. Seaman sticking with this side rail break. Oh, eight b one ball was headed straight to the to the side pocket, but three ball made it. Got an open shot. Look at the spin on that cue ball. Still spinning. And the nine. That's like a 20 second spin. Yeah, folks, we're at uh, Kellogg's Arena here in Battle Creek, and they've got 69 tables set up for the Michigan State Championships, expecting a little over 1,000 players, 148 teams. And we have the Michigan Open for the men and the Michigan Open for the women, for the ladies, 64 men, 48 women. Yeah, they can draw the cue ball over to the right side rail here, kind of. Play with some right spin. Move the cue ball back towards the two. Nicely done. A little That's on the straight side. Yeah. I mean, it's going to have to hit a very high speed into this shot. But I guess you don't have to come all the way over and get right straight on the four because you're going to need an angle to move back towards the five anyways. <clears throat> if he's so straight, I, he might even just sit there. But it looks like he's going to try to force it off the rail. Yeah, cue ball's moving to the right. Ah, it cost him. He cheated the pocket to the left side and got more of the side than he wanted. Mm -hmm. This rack's setting up very nicely for Hong. I think you just play the cue ball with follow here. Fair bit of left spin. Nice play. Favor follow and spin over draw. You know, there was there was a draw option or a stun option on that play, too. Always try to favor follow and spin. It's the easiest one to control. Or, or just, just follow, if that's possible. I like, I like follow all the time. Yeah. The draw is so much, especially on new cloth, because it grabs so quick, mm -hmm. and it slows down pretty quick, too, for some reason. I don't understand what the reason is. Well, he's right in line here. Only cue ball movement is from the 9 to the 10, but I'm sure he'll be fine in that spot as well. It's funny, when you said that, I thought to myself, he's going to want the same angle on the 1, on the 6 ball, where the cue ball was to begin with, and he got it. He played right to it, now he comes right over for the 7. I like the way he did that, too, instead of coming straight across. Got a little too much angle here. I mean, he can he could hold it, but he wants to hold it draw it and hold it enough that he gets the cue ball moving towards the nine. That's actually a decent touch shot there. Killed the ball very well. Yeah, he, he actually, I, I think he does that. Well, the, he does just about everything very, very well, but that's one of his specialties right there. Finesse type stroke. A hundred yeah. finesse stroke.
playing at a pretty decent speed too. I mean, this rack was set up on the easier side, but not afraid to just go at it when he when the balls are there. Yeah, that's one of the things he doesn't show much uh much uh, nerves. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't seem to show. Them. And all the times I've watched him play, well, he takes the game lead on the hill, race to four, the breaks spin the separation. They both seem to. Uh, the table seems to change hands at that time. I don't think we've had a break and run yet. Not yet. Did did a match between Roberto Gomez and Max Lechner this morning. There was a few break and runs there. Uh, yeah, they each had one. Okay. Both played really well too. I I watched it with you guys. <laughs> It was a great match. It was, uh, well, it was a premier match for the for the first round. Sure, that's a great great match to open things up with. Both choosing to break from the side rail. I mean, when I played in the World Ten Ball Championships this year, almost everyone broke from the side rail, and I think Catchy chose to break from the middle, and he won the tournament. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, Catchy's Catchy's got a strong strong break, and. Uh, He's just so powerful with it, but yet controlled. Something quick is going to happen in this rack. Oh. Because we're, we definitely have the two ten lined up, so it's going to be a battle of, as to who gets on the one. It's going to be this is going to be a good battle here because where do you push to here? That uh, you know your opponent is as good with the jump cue as you are. I mean, so you could get really aggressive and try to kick at the one and stick the cue ball there, and maybe get some balls in between the cue ball and the one. But there is a big hole in the middle of the table, kind of between yeah. the eight four, and you and you kind of be have having to think that oh, we'd have to use the eight as the only blocker. But maybe you could get the cue ball kind of tracking towards the three seven as well with that kick. Yeah, they've got he's got sixty seconds after the break. Yeah, he's considering. He just considered that shot quickly that I was talking about, or he's just ooh, look at this. He said he's in too bad of a spot, and he's just going to move that ten right out of there. Oh, you imagine imagine if he didn't catch the point there. <laughs> it the, hangs up in front of the pocket. Yeah, and the 10 uh, ended up <laughs> hanging, hanging around near we, the 1. We actually had a match with uh, Savannah Easton and Maite Ropero where where two misses by Savannah set up her opponent with a nice, nice, makeable uh, combo. Really? On the 10, losing the game, yes. Did she win the match? Uh, Maite did. Uh, Savannah okay. lost the match. Okay. Oh, that one got away, but he's got the long shot, and looks like the cue ball is going to be pretty close to the rail. Yeah, he didn't leave him in a spot where he can pocket it. He can hit the left side of it. It'll start tracking the cue ball to the left, and then it's a question if he can get it over behind that, in, into that 7 3 10 area. This is actually a bit of a tough spot here. I mean, if you stun the cue ball, you can. And that's what he's thinking about now. You can get more, a little bit more energy in it, and get a straighter angle. That's a nice shot. Oh, is it going to leak? It, uh, it didn't. He, Not a. He can well, pocket he, it in the corner for sure. He can pocket it. Yes. Sides questionable, yes. but corner for sure. And the seven adds to uh, the size of the pocket, I think. Yeah. I feel like he's going to go corner here. Bit of right spin, track the cue ball down towards the two seven combo. That was a good try by Hong there. The speed was good. Oh, he does want to get underneath it. Might be forced to play a carom here and then the two into the long pocket. Gonna. He can still get out of it, just gonna have to make a better pot on the two. Good control there. Just a hair, a little bit more speed, he would have really liked it. Yeah, I mean, it's a little too much angle. I, I see the cue ball tracking to the left of the eight, which is good. Biggest trap here, I think, is you kind of stun it a little too much, and then the cue ball comes off the side rail and ends up behind the eight, but it, it's it's manageable.
like in this little bit, just a little bit above center. Which called his extension. Time started to run short. Yeah, I'm just wondering if the above center hit tracks him towards the side pocket too much or if it's going to go to the left of the side pocket. I think it will yeah. go to the left of the side pocket. If it does, that helps him a lot. A lot. Because he comes off that rail perfect for the three. Oh, the four helped him, but uh, um, yeah. the miss didn't. He just got in between, I think, what kind of position he was thinking of. And actually, as he was shooting at it, I realized that if he stunned it, he could have brought the cue ball between the, the eight and the ten, kind of like right back right back to the middle. Uh huh. I think that's what he decided to do last minute, and it's almost like he wasn't quite set on that shot and just got his, just got his wires crossed. It could be because he hits that shot pretty good, and uh, it, it seemed to me like there was just a little movement when he delivered the stroke. Mm -hmm. Nice thin cut there. Didn't uh, hold the cue ball enough, though. Can still make the three. And he comes straight down for the four. Yeah, it actually ends up yeah, being good yeah. natural position, sure. so it's all in the all in the pocketing here. Just to win the first set, I mean, it's a huge mental advantage to be winning that first set. Kind of stretching on the wrong side of the table here. Has to go opposite foot forward, but he knows how to manage that. Got it. Cue ball's coming down too much, though. Wow, that was, well, he kind of overcut it a little bit. He yeah, went to he the did. left side of the pocket, so it traveled the cue ball more. That's right. I don't know if you can get enough right spin on this ball to, pl to play the cue ball long of the corner pocket, or if it is tracking long of the corner pocket naturally. He's going to take the roll out of it. I, I like this cutting the ball going around the eight and around the ten ball. That's like this, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't sure he was going to do that, but he did. I was but thinking about right spin there more than draw, but obviously that his his execution worked very well there. Got pretty much perfect on the five. You know, uh, watching this guy play you know, in, in Vegas, let's see, he was he was uh, third at the Alpha Las Vegas Open this past March. Uh, what He was ninth in 2022 at the same tournament. Uh, but watching him play, he's like, He's only played a couple of them, and it just seems like he's due to win one. Yeah, he just plays so clean, so uh, so strong sometimes, most of the time. Quarterfinal finish in the World Championships yeah. as well, World Pole Championship. Doesn't have any real wins, but he's got some high finishes. Fifth World Pool Championships, fifth Spanish Open. The third, the seventeenth in the U.S. Open is no uh, nothing to sneeze at. Look at this cue ball coming around. Nine's on the rail here, which actually makes it missable. I mean, if this ball is even just a, a little bit off the rail, it makes the shot almost twice as easy. It's just barely on the straight side, but I would I would look to not overhit it. It's a good hit. Powered <laughs> it in right on the rail. He hits them just so clean that they just don't budge. They don't budge off the rail if it's on there. A good first set by Huang there. And he does win it. Four games to two. And he will be breaking to open set number two. Since he did not win the lag. The only advantage Jeremy now has really is the fact that if it goes to a shootout, he gets the choice. He gets the choice of going first and which hole to shoot at because he won the lag. In your experience of commentating a, a lot of Predator Pro Series matches, what what is the player chosen to do more often? I've only, I only know one time, and I can't remember the player's name, but, uh, but I, I've only seen a player uh, turn down going first once. And I've had conversations with, well, all the other commentators, uh, Jeremy, uh, uh, Jimmy, Tim, uh, and, and they all feel that going first is an advantage. Mm -hmm. Put the pressure on your opponent. Don't don't put yourself Especially in spots if you're where successful. you feel like you yeah. have to make it. You, you yeah. get you get the step first. And plus, if you, for example, if you feel you have a stronger side you want to start out with, well, you get to start it. That helps too. 
Yeah, you don't want to get off to the wrong, on the wrong foot, mm -hmm. missing the, the first shot. It's it says, sure. say you're left-handed and you, know, you prefer shooting to the right-hand corner pocket as you look at the table, uh, or vice versa. Well, then you have that choice. Mm -hmm. And mentally, it's probably an advantage. Although we both know that uh, should be able to make them both with the same ease. Or... You know, accuracy dimensions are going dimension. the same both That's ways. Exactly it, right. But uh, it's the same shot both ways. It's just in your head. I mean, the other interesting thing about the shootout too is is different players hitting it in different ways or or starting with the cue ball. In oh, different I've seen it places. all different ways. Yeah. They like to wrap it out of the lower corner pocket. Some guys like to hit it real naturally, but just above center, and they'll catch the bottom rail, side rail, head rail, and just kind of dies off the head rail. Mm -hmm. But it usually, it's usually tracking towards the side pocket on off the third rail. Right. But the speed, you have to hit it way too hard to get there. Sure. Uh, but you hit it with means some guys like to fire it. Some guys like to just uh, the medium speed. Yeah. It's preference, just preference, what you stroke the best. One of the most surprising things I saw on a spot shot was Eklund Kachi shooting him at like about 50 miles an hour. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he was firing him. He had no success with that, and he quickly changed to a, a, a higher percentage yeah. medium ball. Yeah, well, if you don't cue the ball in the exact, exact. right position, you're going to catch too much deflection, right? So, uh, yeah, that makes the pocket a little bit smaller, too. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun watching all these different different uh, players, and it seems like the Filipino players that I've seen play, they like to wrap it out of the corner. Mm -hmm. And after having success with that, uh, they all seem to take to it right away. But... Uh, uh, in my opinion, from what I've seen, uh, the most successful way is to just hit it with just above center um, cue that, ball. That's how Fedor likes to hit. Yes. I know yeah, that. he shoots yeah. it exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. Nice shot there. Oh, Well, I was going to say he got unlucky, but at least he developed it to a point where he can combo it in. The 6-7, yes. Three balls. Well, the three ball goes to the side. Do you think he'll bank this? Or will he just play it in the in the left hand side pocket? I, I think I think he plays it straight in. Just plays a soft draw type. Oh, he's going in the corner. I would have favored side. Well, if he goes to the corner, it puts a little draw, and he's going to catch it. Oh, he's going to bank it. You're right. Yeah. yeah, the way it's lined up, it just looks like a good bank. Probably can't slow the cue ball down enough if you start playing it straight in. He's worried about ten getting in between these three. Oh, that's oh, that was the other. Because now he can use the two rails or just draw it. And hold it underneath the tent. That's the that's the shot I saw from the beginning. Yeah, he he's just he's just so accurate. It just it comes with such an such ease that he pockets balls. Well, and you know, he looks good when he's powering the ball, and he looks good when he's finessing the ball. Exactly too, right. Like you yeah, know, like some some players that are stronger in the finesse area when they have to power a ball you kind of think oh geez like you know it's just it hit it real smooth you know maybe they, they get a good result but he looks strong on all shots yeah, he's looking real solid on at the on the stream table today so far the only one i've seen look uh that good was fetter Yeah, he won in two sets. Or well, he wasn't he wasn't line. really tested. The young man has only been playing for a few years, and uh, he's a six sixty one Fargo. Okay. Um, uh, but I tell you, the young <laughs> the young man played real solid. When he had opportunities, he executed uh, nicely. He had a full ball run, a full uh, table run, off of uh, uh, I would say low percentage safe, but he got the safe and got to run out from there, and he had. A, he won a couple of games in the first set, and then uh, Federer closed him out in the second. American player? No, he's actually from Switzerland, but he he, he came here with the Polish team. Okay. Uh, well, I forgot the young man's name. Uh, Mikhail uh, Olek. Okay. Got more angle than he would would have liked here. But still manageable, I think. Kind of stun the cue ball below the ten. Track it back over to where it is right now. Yeah, just getting back to that one young man. He, he's actually 34 years old, and he's only been playing for seven years. Oh, the ball skidded. Did you see that? Uh, that we're does not, happen. We're not able to bring up a replay. But yeah, we we can't do that. But but the ball the, the ball twisted on him. Yeah, you he actually see made that, that ball. Hmm. Again, the humidity plays a factor in that a little bit. You know, I, I I've often I've often tried to figure out what causes the skid, and I think it's more the way you strike the cue ball. It's like like 
it's like throwing a knuckleball. Uh, in, and the ball's not spinning, it's kind of sliding, and when it hits the object ball, it kind of forces it over. So, so I think that, that uh, definitely uh, lends towards the ball kicking. Mm -hmm. But to me, the skidding is more like when it undercuts, like it's grabbing okay. the cut angle, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the skidding, I think, is from two pieces of chalk on the object ball or an, uh, and the cue ball, or just kind of, you know, spots where the ball is not quite as polished. They end up meeting each other. I mean, it's pretty rare overall. People people talk like it happens uh, a lot, but I think, you know, it only happens once every 500 or so games where there's a real bad one where a it real bad makes one like you that miss one. a ball. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've had them happen a little more often than that, and that's why I, I tend to believe that it's it's the way you deliver the cue. I think it could definitely be part of it, yeah. Like the ball's not rolling solid enough, so yeah. it doesn't really cut yeah. off the, uh, the the object ball, doesn't cut off the cue balls yeah, I would naturally love, as it should. I would Nice shot by Jeremy there on this 10 ball. I would love to have a slow motion, real slow motion tape of some skids mm -hmm. to see exactly what transpires, mm -hmm. the way the cue goes through the ball, the way the... The, cu the way the, the cue ball leaves the tip and, right. and strikes the cue ball. We'll have to get Dr. Dave on it. <laughs> there so you that's go. A, that's one thing I, I haven't seen him solve. Maybe there is a video out there somewhere, but I've never seen it. I've never seen anyone solve it, actually. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. Well, in the snooker, they call it a kick, right? Uh, yeah. To me, to me, a kick is more like when the cue ball jumps off the object ball. Okay. And a skid is, is when the object ball undercuts because of an odd contact, right? Well, now I, I'm not sure if, if if I heard someone call that a, a spin, a cut-induced spin. Could be. That uh, makes sense, too. Yeah, yeah, like like usually the ball would be turning towards the pocket, but it's turning mm -hmm. away from the pocket mm -hmm. for whatever reason, right? Because it spins both ways. When when it, when it when it right. when, yeah, it'll go both ways on you sometimes. Yeah. Well, this no opportunity here. Just a uh, a push out. Would you even consider a, a just a straight up kick and try to kick that one ball past the side pocket, close to the side? I mean, hold the cue ball up there. Yeah. But it, it's it's pretty open down there. The the if the six and seven were closer, I would probably do that. But I think a push is better here. But I just looking at that and I was thinking, well, if you can hit, make sure to hit about a third of the cue ball on the one ball on the left side, it might. I it, see it that. Yeah. It's tough to judge when exactly. the object ball is so far from the rail. Oh, it's out in the middle. Yeah. 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 This is a good push. I mean, it's it's like a challenge push, right? Or I mean, he might not even put him into a spot where he can pocket it. He's just going to leave the right edge of it. Didn't quite leave him enough room to pocket it, I don't think. Well, he can pocket it with the... If he can pocket this ball, the cue ball uh, will track towards that three. And it might be a good two-way shot. Yeah, the nine's in the way. So, okay. I mean, like, he could throw it in with a bunch of left, but pretty dangerous when the... Well, he's going to bank it. Here's an aggressive play. Nice thing about this is it's a bit of a two-way as well, though. Yes, you got five balls that might come into play, there but a big a, opening in the middle. Yeah, there's an opening between the five seven. Gave it back. I mean, kind of gave away one of the plays. Not that Hong wouldn't have seen it, but he called it, called the pocket, and then decided to give it back. <laughs> I mean, he, I'm sure he would have seen. Well, maybe it maybe he uh, he uh, walked him into it. Sure, that's a, <laughs> that'd be the that'd be the double steer. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. He's calling the bank as well. Well, it's got side pocket speed, although it really killed off that <laughs> bottom rail. Yeah. First rail came off a little straight, too, especially for the speed he hit it at. Mm. But yeah. I guess in hindsight, on that in that particular situation, Jeremy made the right uh, decision because he got the best of it here. Cue ball's going to come naturally over to the left side of the table, which is where he needs it to a two. Every ball's in the open here. Going to have to get a pretty small angle on the five to get where you want to be exactly on the six. But if you don't shoot it in the corner, you could also shoot it in the side, in the right side pocket. Didn't realize he was hampered on the bridging here, but he's, hey, he's working around it.
good natural angle here around the three. Not much movement for the next three shots. Just going to be looking at how, what kind of angle he gets on the five. I, and I think ideally you want to get straight, shoot the five in the right side pocket, shoot the six in the bottom left corner pocket. Probably be looking to keep, draw the cue ball back two rails here, kind of kill it into position because he's getting trying to get a pretty specific angle on the five. It's a good angle for that shot. Hit this, he did. It's going to change the whole layout of the rack. Uh, or a little longer shot? Uh, yeah, I guess he could just cinch it in and take a longer shot. And, and after that, the cue ball is going to be running to the seven for sure. So then, then you're thinking about where's the seven going to end up. He can still run out. I mean, at the point he moves the seven, there's only three other balls on the table. So chances of actually not getting a shot on it or getting hooked are pretty low. The only thing that, that could really hurt him here is to pocket the seven and be stuck with a bank on the eight. Well, I was thinking and it's not a bad thing. Yeah, I was thinking, would you get aggressive and play off the top side of the seven and kind of try, kind of try to play both, like obviously the six more, well, and I, then track the cue ball over towards the eight. I think if he hits it with just Can medium you? speed, it, it works out for him just right, just like this. Nice hit. Yeah, and a, a little harder would have given him the same angle on the seven, really. Right. And now he's a little tough getting on the eight. Yeah, he's bringing out his extension here, and it looks like a draw play. Can can you get enough angle if you follow it? Might cheat it to the extreme right part of the uh, pocket. I don't know. It looks. I think he's going to draw it straight back. Yeah, I think just past his side pocket. Oh, he's going to just Got follow. Over. Yeah. I like the way he did that. That's. Yeah. He Is took it? he took the longer. He played short side instead of the the, the typical you know same. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's Same tough pocket. to play a power draw when you're using an extension and kind of reaching like that. So you have to think of another option there. And he thought of a good one because he played, stayed within himself, and now he'll just follow up for the 9 on the side and come around for the 10. Been a pretty well-played match. I mean, you know, Jeremy's made a couple small errors, but really it's just been a long running out very well. to take a two rack lead in the second set so you can throw in a, a break and run here you gotta make him a big favorite to win the second set yeah, exactly and and he's been breaking the balls pretty good yeah hometown crowds getting behind him nice round of applause there every time he wins a rack that's always music to your heart isn't it sure We are sponsored by Predator Group, Kamui Brands, Runs of Puerto Rico, Medalla Light. There's 13 Predator 9-foot Apex tables, 69 of the 7-foot tables. The Arena Lights, the Arcos Balls, even the Bridge, say Predator. Switching signs here. Keep up from the right side of the table. First, I think I feel like almost every break so far this match. Finally decided to switch up sides, see if he can change his luck. And the great thing about the Arcos balls is the four balls purple. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> The color we've been playing with for the last uh, uh, well, since I was years. fifteen years old, fourteen years old, sure, that's pretty close to a hundred years. <laughs> it's like fifty-six years, fifty-seven years actually. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna try to get the three, three, ten, six stack in between the one and the cue ball here. Oh, he's gonna do the eight to guarantee the. There's 
there can't be a, a window between the three and the ten. I doubt it. It's, no, there's not. It's gonna. He's gonna it's gonna a go typical kick, kick yeah. safe here. I feel like he's gonna play a kick safe where he tries to draw the cue ball back behind the nine and and use the three six ten stack again. Ooh, I would have. Nice. Gotta come up. I would have tried a, a draw kick safe there. He just tried to make. He went all out. I think. Just went for it. I feel like the six is going to be all the pocket once the three moves. He was looking at the six ten. Don't yeah. know if that has a pocket or not. Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that one's angling too far towards the side rail. But I'm, I'm just thinking about just pocketing the six uh, in the, the corner. In, yeah, yeah, in the right mm -hmm. pocket. Can't tell if he's got an angle where he's going to run into it here, for, or if there's a big draw option coming out of it. Looks like there is. If he's going closed bridge like this, he's going to draw it all the way back across the seven. Only caught the nine. Still got the cue ball down table though. Four is makeable on the left side. Yeah. Just following your train of thought. <coughs> I mean, you'd want to hit this four ball with authority, but the cue ball's frozen on the rail. So it's, it's it have to really elevate to get into the proper part of the cue ball to actually stun it. The other option is to slow roll it. You want to avoid, yeah, look at this. Imagine this shot, George. I mean, he's, he's in between shooting both shots, but looks like he might be elevating way up in the air just because he wants to hit the ball. Oh, uh, he's with coming authority. back down. Yeah, he did, uh, yeah. I think he's just going to roll it. It's in between. Yeah. Putting myself in that position, I'm just going to roll it. If I'm trying to make it or I'm going to play safe one or the other. He's playing safe all the yeah, way. That's how, yeah, that's how sh tough was the, one the shot other. was. Yeah. Yeah, because if, if you're going for it, if, you know, if you're all out going for the win, you're going to sell out if you miss it. Uh, this way, he at least... Had it caught a little bit to the right of the eight, he'd be safe behind the six ten. Mm -hmm. That's what he was trying to do there. Yeah. Biggest problem Jeremy has here is the cue ball running into the six ten. He can play it with some left spin or draw the cue ball. At that point, I think you're trying to track it between the five seven. Okay, just chose to go oh, a little what longer. Nice shot. Yeah, it's a good shot. Two rails forward. Yep. Or just straight down. I see a lot of players come straight down on shots like this. I like going. I like using that second rail I almost do too. always. Yeah. Almost always. It's gonna play into the angle more often. Uh, you're, you're killing into the area position more. Uh, more. About the only reason I shy away from it sometimes is because it's new cloth and it won't grab. But that grab, this, this cloth grabs very nice when it's new. Mm -hmm. Doesn't grab, you know, full on, but it grabs a lot more than other new claws. I agree. Yeah. Plays really well. Yeah. I think he's going to clip the 10 here a little bit, which could kind of alter his exact track of the cue ball, but he should find a way out of that. Coming straight back. Yeah. Is it too much? It's okay. Uh, he's saying uh, there he needs it to slow down. You'd have to know the speed of the table here to know if he can actually slow this one down one rail. Uh, My intuition is that he can, but he'd have to drop it in very slowly towards the side pocket. You think he might fire and go down, up, and back that, again? That'd be uh, the other option, traveling the cue ball about 25 feet up yeah. and down. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if you can't slow it down, you got to do it. There's no, no other play. It's got to go on the side. I don't think you'll risk drawing into the ten. I was just going to say you could draw into the yeah, ten. Yeah, hit the right. Let yeah. the, the side of it goes right into the pocket, into the into the drink. Yeah, the way he's queuing up at it, I think he's going up and down. He's going to try to slow roll it. Oh, he's going up and down. Oh, nice hit. Does he get see? Oh, look how nice this is. As long as the ball ro rolls, ooh, oh, slow down on the way back. Did a it bit. did it right in the yeah. middle of the table. Yeah. Wow, I thought he. I thought it was success. This isn't a, I'd say he kicked this in about 30% of the time. Yeah, it's close enough to the pot. But will there be shape on the nine? Right. Probably end up behind the 10. 
depending on your speed. Is going to freeze up on the rail here. If it does, it looks like it's got a lot tougher. Oh, he, he <laughs> it stops got... in front of the pocket, yeah. gives him full access. Right, yeah. It's <laughs> one of those ones where you can queue through the pocket, and even though you're near the rail, you're not elevating as much as you would have to. Still a long shot. Sure. It's only eight feet away. The way he's been playing so far, I, I'd make him a favor here. Oh, yeah. Nice hit. And those shots are just so much tougher than these pros actually make it make it look, right? They they are. Yeah, they are. They really are. You know, you think, oh, oh, well, it's near the pocket. It's not a tough shot. But when you're slightly elevated like that, and you have nine feet between the cue ball and the object ball, you have to hit it extremely well. And see that decision right there to go past the ten and play it into the same pocket. A lot of guys would have just tried to kill it off the bottom rail, and they had more angle than you know the. It'd be hard to kill. Mm -hmm. It would slide over too close to the 10. He recognized it right away and just kind of, well, I'll just slide on the other side of it. Sure. It's all the small decision making that add up to, sure. to these players playing at such a high level. Still trailing in the set. Still haven't seen a break and run, so we can't say like oh we'll look for him to run the set out it's mm -hmm. not it's not following the trend of the match but um. they've both made some good decisions on shots um i think jeremy has one or two more misses okay yeah jeremy at this point has five errors in this set compared to duong's uh three in Jerry's. the two sets combined? Or no, just in this set. In this set, uh, five errors, really. The, the one thing I noticed about the information is when it changed sets, the information left us. I don't have access to that information. Okay. Uh, I just don't know how to play with this yet. Once I start playing with it, I'll, I'll see if I can, you know, find that information. Sure. But right now, I'm just in what I can look at. Um, don't have access to... Um, big part about what's happening with with the lack of break and runs too is they've actually made balls on maybe two-thirds of the breaks maybe closer to half but they're not getting a shot on the first ball we've seen a lot of pushes in this match i mean you could push them straight in to the point where it'd be really tough to play position on the two Like he's gonna do something similar to that, but leave him an angle. I would have, I would have favored pushing, a, pushing him a little more straight in. Where if he is to pocket this, he wouldn't. I guess this is a little more, you know, tempting for him to make a pod and then and then see what happens on the two. Mm -hmm. If he did push him straight in, he was automatically gonna get the push back. Well, he's gonna if he if he wants any kind of shot at the two, he's gonna have to hit it pretty darn good to get the cue ball across the eight. I don't think he can hold on the left side of it. Um he might be able to. But why would he want to be on the left side of uh, uh, as we look at the, at the table yeah, yeah. He, uh, they're going to be okay to get to cross the eight, but e even at that point, the, the two doesn't really have a pocket, right? So it's, it's right. like you're playing position to play safe on the two. He's going to cross it, try to bring the cue ball down. That's Five interesting. Five ball could hit the cue ball on the way yes. down to the short rail here. Depending on how he hits this, he could also get a kiss. Oh, he crossed it all right. Cue oh, ball. Somehow the cue ball came towards this corner pocket, but not it's quite. It's not going to get there. Perfect. Nice shot. Yeah. You get try to get behind the seven here. Uh, f feel like it's tough to get enough of right spin on the cue ball to to do that, and I would never want to draw it over near the seven. Okay. I, I, yeah, you're too far away. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh banking the one kind of to the right of the two four eight stack and playing the cue ball towards the five. If the eight ball wasn't there, I'd try to cut it on the left side and come two rails behind the six. There's but that with one the too. Eight ball, I see that. Yeah, behind, but the eight ball being there, uh, I think takes that away. Just didn't catch the two properly. Kind of hit it, hit it pretty good, really. Gonna have a tactical rack now. The two yeah. balls tied up. He could actually cut the one into the two ten, and that that'll kind of 
change that run situation back up, there. Yeah, just run yeah. back up to where it's at now and, and, and use the 8-4. Yep. Oh, right. this is creative. I I think he's calling it just in case. I think he's going to put the cue ball behind the 4. He's just stopping yeah, the cue ball behind the 4. What are you going to do with the 2 at that point even if you make it? See, I would have tried to develop the 210 there. I mean, who am I to, who am I to double guess, <laughs> second guess him? He's an 810 Fargo, but it's something, something develop about. Develop the 210. Uh, the way they're lying, it's hard to because the 10 ball's going above the 9. Oh, I'm just saying, like, at least move them so Correct. you can, you can kind of, yeah. like, make progression in the rack, right? That That's kind of my thinking there. It's like, but I guess if he would have banked it in, then he could have developed it and played safe at the same time. And this is going to change that situation. Left the well, combo. look what he just did. Yeah. Now, if he makes the bank, it's natural for the 210 right afterwards, and the four ball could be his cover. Yeah, it's it's tough. To, oh, I see that. It's tough to see from our angle, but I feel like the two is just a little bit lower than the 10, and mm -hmm. it's kind of leading towards the 10 going to the side rail. It's close, though. I I see your shot for sure. If it was lined up, I'd... Definitely go for it. It must not be quite lined up because I think he would have went for it. Well, he seems to have hit that pretty darn good. Does he have a shot? Yeah. He, yeah, I can see the left side of it. The cue ball is going to be tracking towards the corner pocket if he does hit the left side of it. It's just a question if he can hit it thin enough to avoid the scratch. Thick side. That's a one. Oh, pocket. look at this. Yeah, it's a one He's, pocket. Type I zone. noticed in, in his uh, uh, wins, and he plays quite a bit of one pocket. Mm -hmm. He's I've had some it. success up here in this yeah. area. Anyway, and he was considering long banking a few balls, which is a sign of a, a one pocket player as mm -hmm. well. It's a decently big game in Michigan. I know they play a lot in Detroit. So. Yeah, we no played reason. a lot in Arizona. It's played a lot just about everywhere now. Sure, yeah. Yeah, he's going to move that. Just give a ball in hand. Hmm. But now uh, everything is open. Yeah. So he's pretty much challenged Jeremy to run out. He was trying to he was trying to tie the 10 up with the 6. But, uh, the That's a good call there. Yeah. Uh, I figured he was doing something with the 10, but I just didn't figure it out as fast as you did. Rack line's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Really, if he gets good on this two ball. Oh, crazy. I've brought it up a few times, but I'll tell you, it's humid outside. The chalk is getting wet. The cue ball's over deflecting a little bit. It's slowing the tables down a little bit. I mean, it's easy to, you know, pick something out there, but that's from the chalk getting wet. Like, you can feel the humidity in the room, you know? Wow, that was big. That's that's put him on the hill. So now yeah. instead, if he runs it out and Jeremy doesn't, uh, they're tied. Huge, huge rack. No kidding. Got a little straight here, but he'll just stun the ball instead of drawing the ball or following it. Or it's even a, there's even a power draw option yeah, I think over to that it. side. Yeah. I think he's going with the power draw. Just above to where he just pointed. Stuck. Oh, stunned. You got a little straight here, too, didn't you? Yeah, if this cue ball is tracking before the side pocket, or even after it, he's okay. As long yep. as it's not tracking right back into it. It's coming back again. There it goes. Straight again. <laughs> he can, yeah, he, he's got a bit angle where he can follow forward two rails here. I think. I mean, he's down looking at it. He might be a little straighter than I'm thinking, but. Nice hit. Yeah, he's looking solid. He's looking real solid. Mm -hmm. It might not be no surprise to find him and Mr. Gorst in the hot seat for this match. Well, there is no hot seat. Right, but. Definitely uh, advancing 16th, to the final yeah, sure, 16. Yeah, sure. 
Well, they'll both be. Uh, Federer just played his first match. I don't th think he's. I'm not sure if he's playing now or not. Can't quite see him over there. Um, let's see if I can. Draw this ball out one rail. Good soft touch there. Again, when he has to play that kind of finesse kill shot, comes with it no problem. Those shots yeah, are tougher than they look. He's in really good control of his stroke there. It, like, and I think you mentioned that you said his timing still seems to be real good through the ball. Oh yeah, yeah. And like, what we mean by that is getting like the height of the acceleration of the forward stroke at the cue ball, where it's like you're shooting as if the cue ball is not even there. You know, it's just like a natural fall through. And the way it makes the cue ball react really purely. And even in a way, like you don't have to stroke as hard at the ball and you can still create a lot of action with it. Mm -hmm. And that shot he just shot on the nine ball when it came forward real nice. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, just uh, to get it fall in just yeah. almost perfect line. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about. Like yep. timing a lot yep. of top spin on the cue ball where the, the spin can hold on the ball just because of the pureness of how you're hitting the ball. And here we are, tied at two. Let's take a look at their stats here. How are we doing here? Uh, Nong's made 21 balls. Jeremy's made 17. He's missed once. Duong has. He fouled once. Jeremy has no misses, but he just didn't he just, uh, well, he fouled, but that's also considered a miss. Four errors to six errors um, in Duong's favor. See if someone can get a shot on the break. Again, you're right. No break and runs. And they're both playing extremely well. Mm -hmm. Rather well. But they both had a mistake here and there. Uh, kind of what we alluded to at the beginning of the match. Right. That they, they play real solid, very, very impressive, and then something just seems to slip away. Rack didn't really spread there. There goes the cue ball. Yeah, it got kicked in. Opportunity for Jeremy. Two and the three, I feel like are gonna go in the same pocket. If he play if he plays the three, he would want to play the three in the opposite corner pocket, but I feel like he might clip the ten on the way to the four if he if he does that. There might just be enough room where he can miss the 10. If he decides that he can, he will play it in the opposite corner pocket. Yeah, I was looking at that, right? The, the most important thing here from the 1 to the 2 is to make sure he keeps the proper angle so he doesn't have doesn't have any. He must be dead straight in on the, th on, on the 2, I think. Yeah, that will work. I think there might be just enough room to slide the cue ball past the 10 without hitting it. And, and this might give him what you just mentioned, where he's got to clear the 10 after shooting, the, well, while he shoots the three, where he's got to clear the 10 ball to get up for the four. Mm -hmm. uh, this angle right here, because he's not straight in, he, he, it goes, he's I a little high. Mean, so he's going to have yeah. to move it a little so bit. He's going to have to just roll it forward a little bit, and it should come off the rail just right. Oh, he oh, was able to just stop it. I, I agree with you. Up. It looked yeah. like it was moving to the left. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. He's good here. Biggest, biggest uh, fear on this one is. Getting behind the nine. I think. It would I wonder if he's so worried about that that he'll just float out to the middle. I mean, you'd typically yeah. you'd want to go across the second rail here, but. Well, the middle, like he, he you just mentioned, yeah. gives him the perfect angle to come off the four for the five. Yeah, there's that. I, you know, I think typically you'd want to be closer to it. But I agree. Just worried I about definitely getting, agree. Yeah. yeah, he's just worried about getting behind the nine there. And you just want to make sure he didn't reach that side rail where there's a side pocket. Yeah. Big shot. He found it. Play the six on the side here. Just move the cue ball over two rails to the left. He's going to fall. Exactly. Yeah. Not too hard. How's his speed? Perfect. Uh, this looks nice. He's in line now. I mean, you know, the, the, the bottom part of this, uh, of this rack where the balls were racked was really jammed up. He, he managed around it real good. And 
He, he's actually unhappy with where he's at because it's a little bit below where he wants to be I for the six. I see that. The cue ball's going yeah. the wrong way just slightly. Right. I think he'll be able to manage. But, yeah, if he was going towards the seven, he would have shot by now. Yep. Mm. Uh, so it, it, this is manageable, except that in your mind you've just made a mistake. Yeah. Does the eight pass the ten? Uh, I, You know, I can't tell. I, th I would say yes. He's like, not looking at that. Uh, yeah, he's the, it looks like he has to draw into it. I mean, if you execute this perfectly and you catch the top side of the eight, you're pushing the eight towards the left corner pocket. That'll be his goal here. You think he's going to draw right into it? I think he has to. I mean, it, you know, if, if the eight doesn't pass the ten, then your only other option is to, to follow, and that's always playing. So he's basically, if he's rolling into the eight or the ten, he's rolling the dice. Yeah, but I, I think what he's going to try exactly is push the 8 over the opposite corner pocket. Oh, he drew it too much. He's going to have... Does he have an easy roll-up safe? I mean, he's looking at it, but he definitely wasn't trying to play it in that pocket. No, he's just triple-checking he, that is there you know, a, a third of a pocket that he can shoot it in here because he's forced to now. He must have been convinced it wouldn't go because he never really looked at it like he just did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I... He was trying to hit the eight there for yeah. sure. Um, other question here is, does he have the angle to just kind of roll the cue ball behind the ten? Yeah, he's going to leave an easy kick shot because he's going to. Well, he looks like he's playing it. Whoa! Oh, I mean, obviously he got rushed by the shot clock there, but I'm I'm trying to think like he just tried to cross bank last minute because he got rushed by the shot clock. I think he might have. He didn't have an extension. I feel like he would have had to wear. Yeah, he would have called it exactly. Yeah. Ah, uh, what a big, big shot he just. That's actually. I mean, you know, he's he's obviously in a spot there where he, he, there's a bunch of things going through his mind, and he just lost he just lost track of the shot clock. I agree. Because he, you know, once once that beep went off, he rushed right through the shot. Yeah, he just it didn't even come into his mind that, like, he, had, he hadn't had his mind made up yet, right? And instead of being on the hill, his opponent is. But his opponent can close out the match. Won't force a shootout. Who do you like to win the tournament if you have to pick one player without, uh, without favoritism? Just, just well, I'm not going to put any favoritism. I'm just going to go with uh, – we've got the pool stack guy here. I'm going to go with Fax. The only guy that's won the tournament, one of these tournaments three times has been Feder Gorse. Right. But Yap has won this particular stock two, two Twice. times in a row. So Twice. Twice. There's the iffy. And actually, I believe Feder was he – he placed high here. Yeah, he won once in Ohio. He placed fifth here last year. Okay. His lowest, uh, I think he's cashed in every three, one. He's cashed in five or six of the eight events he's played. Yeah. I think, I think you know, he obviously plays well under pressure. Uh, he obviously does everything well. But uh, also, I believe when it's come down to the shootouts, I, I have to think his shootout record is very very high as well that's actually that'd be a great stat and I'm not sure that they're keeping that stat and there is the way the records are kept you know they're kept with uh, two to one when there's a shootout okay uh, it doesn't really show you the number of for instance some of the highest ones we saw was the 13 and 14 I remember that uh, that was Atencio and Oi yeah uh, Grabe had a real high one. We've had several really high ones. Uh, Yap had a real high one, too. And um, uh, so it'd be nice to be able to see if the records would have been kept to where uh, 
this is how Federer, this is how Jeremy, this is how this player has performed in their shootouts. Mm -hmm. uh, they've attempted, in the whole eight events, they've attempted 47, and they've only missed five. Right. Or yeah. three, or something like that. I think I think the big, great stat. I think the big one is too is like just did you win the shootout overall? Like ha have you have sure. you gone down in the shootout? Yeah. Right. Most of them are lost by one one uh, one shot. Yeah. Or a lot of them are lost by one shot. Jeremy had to call his extension here. I think he has his mind made up now. See, if, if before hard. trying that, I would have tried to get down here behind the 10. Yeah, there was I'd a... I'd have gone off the rail and kind, kind of slid down. I hear you, yeah. Might have been trying to move the cue ball a little closer mm. to the 8, but still, yeah, that, that 10 was a big ball there. I think he's flustered a little bit from what happened in the last rack, but, you know, when the races are so short, like, you have to realize you're only one game from the hill here, right? Or... or uh, yeah, it's yeah. like it, there's there's no there's no time for getting down on yourself in these races, right? Well, in these short races, there's just every shot is as important as the first, right? Everything goes here as long as the four passes the seven, which I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, I think we we may have seen Jeremy at the table for the last time. Not sure if he can get on this four though. Oh, he okay. Never yeah, mind. Just cheat the pocket. I, yeah, he had to cheat it. Just come into the six. Yeah, definitely gonna be a five-seven combo play, but not much risk there because the five should just hang over the pocket afterwards. He oh, did he went go the other way. Him. Hmm. Just shows like never, never shoot a combo unless you have to, even if the other ball's hanging in the pocket, right? I guess well, you know, like, he didn't have to move the cue ball very far into the short area. Yeah, and by short the side. by the way, he moved the five ball there. His angle wasn't quite what we were thinking it might have been on the on the on the four. Yeah, it was tough to get it back to mm -hmm. the left exactly. of it, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Strong match by Huang. Didn't quite get the break and runs that he would want to see going forward, but I don't feel like he broke the balls bad. I feel like he just wasn't getting shots. No doubt he's going to be a force to reckon with throughout the tournament. Oh, yes. Jeremy can do well, too. He's got the home crowd behind him. He's a great player. <laughs> Have to win a couple matches to get back to the redraw now. Yes, he does. He has to win. Well, he's won Round one, four, so he's got to win three. Three? Yeah, yeah he's got to win three more. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Got another match coming up in about at eight thirty Eastern time. Eight o'clock. Oh, pardon me, eight o'clock Eastern Eastern time. So about ten minutes. Thanks again, guys. This is Eric and George signing off.